Why, hello there. It's one one more week has gone by and it's time for the uh, Tulsa World Scene staff to gather around the virtual fireplace and talk about whatever comes to mind. Uh, last week, I believe we got rather weird. Uh, this week, we decided we'd get otherworldly or unworldly or something like that. So, um, and it all and it all comes down to something that Jimmy has been working on, as you might have guessed. So, Jimmy, we will let you start. As a matter of fact, I just <clears throat> got off the phone with Denise Crosby, who played Tasha Yar on Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, really a pleasant uh, lady to talk to. Greatly enjoyed it. She'll be here in Tulsa, November nineteenth and twentieth, for the Retromania uh, Expo show at Central Park Hall on the fairgrounds. It's the one on the east side of the fairgrounds. But uh, it'll be Tulsa's first kind of uh, uh, big pop culture con in a while. I mean, it's certainly the biggest guest we've had here as far as cons go in a while since the Wizard World shows of a few years ago. And uh, But she'll be a great guest. From People love Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, James, you and I, I'm sure, uh, watched the original series Long, long ago. Do you prefer one over the other? Do you prefer the original over Next Gen? If, well, <clears throat> if, if, if I dare look, I think we have most of them on um, VHF tapes that we recorded off broadcast because my late wife was obsessed with hmm. Star Trek. Um, and uh, there was one episode that I believe I forgot to. Uh, this was in the days when you had to manually program every single thing. And I forgot to set up a, oh dear, forgot to set up the recorder. And we missed one episode. And maybe five years went by before that wound healed and she, she no longer <laughs> held me responsible so but um no i i i like I, and, and 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 while i wasn't crazy about it i mean i was i i did enjoy them um i i i like the next generation i think i preferred that to even the to, to to the to the original series um and then we went into the you know what were the other permutations? There was the Deep Space Voyager, Nine. Deep Space Nine. Voyager. Enterprise. Enterprise. And, and everything that's come after. And, um, uh, but actually the, it, the science fiction show that I think I liked the most was Babylon 5, which was also about the, the 90s. And which I just saw recently that they're, they're rebooting for, possibly next year um and starting that over again but it was it was that similar it was it was a it was a contained series it was a five-year story arc set on a gigantic spaceship that was sort of like the united nations in space and it was very complicated um but uh but i enjoyed it a lot how about how about you grace what 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 uh what sort of as as I would call it, what sort of massive cosmic boom boom show um, ha, ha, do you like? Mm, um, just off the top of my head, um, a show that came out fairly recently that I I feel like is in the sci fi genre was Westworld. Did you guys see that one? Sure. Yeah, I really liked that one. I, it was really good. I think in the first season, and then in the second season, it kind of fell apart for me, but I still enjoyed it. So. Westworld was one of them. And then um, I'm curious if you guys have also seen The Rings of Power, the new Lord of the Rings like spinoff series that just came out. No, I haven't. I, 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 I could never get into Tolkien. I mean, I, I ended up watching the films because my wife wanted to watch the films, but mm -hmm. I know people love it and great for them, but it just doesn't, 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 doesn't quite send me the way it, it sends a lot of people. What should people know about it, Grace? Um, well, I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's the most expensive TV show ever created. Like per episode, I think they spent like 
50 million dollars or something like that because it's an amazon show so they've got deep pockets and that definitely really really shows in all the special effects and the cgi and everything like that it's just really a beautiful show to watch so that's i think what i enjoyed the most about it even though i haven't i'm not like a huge tolkien fan and i never got like super into lord of the rings but i could still appreciate the show just because it was so well shot and the cinematography and everything was great so i would recommend it how about you jimmy what what uh, uh obviously you 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 know you, you know enough about the t- star trek the next generation to talk with denise crosby yeah um uh, sometimes you can tell what do you really love and that you own it so if i walk in the next room i've got the original series on uh dvd so i guess that's my jam as far as the star trek series go but many people prefer next generation over the original series i think when tv guide ranked the uh top shows of all time they ranked next generation over uh the original series which there were more seasons so you have more stories and uh, let's make people really mad i I prefer star trek over star wars Ooh, that's a hot take (laughs) Well, I, and I I would I would I would join you in that um, because um, I lost interest in Star Wars after the Phantom Menace. Um, that was such a letdown after the the, the original trilogy. Um, that uh, I've I've not seen anything since then that 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 in the quote Star Wars uh, universe. Of course, I haven't seen all of the new Star Trek things because um, my reason for watching them is no longer here. But um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I the original the original Star Wars was a great a great tri- trilogy. And the rest, those who love them, have a have a grand time. <laughs> I've not investigated the the series, the TV series that have branched out from Star Wars, but many people love them. Grace, have you seen The Mandalorian or any of these other shows uh, I, with the baby Boba I, or maybe uh, Yoda and all that stuff? No, I, I have not seen those, but I've definitely been seeing you know the baby Yoda. Um, BB-8 craze I feel like people are really obsessed with them but I haven't seen it mostly because I think it's a Disney plus show and I don't have a Disney plus subscription there's just too many streaming platforms these days I can't keep up with all of them so I haven't seen it yeah you know I I, I know there was a the acronym that probably it may still be it may still be used I don't know but a, a FOMO the fear of missing out Mm-hmm. Um, I came up with what I refer to as Doku, which is the dread of keeping up, which in this business uh, we all know is is getting more and more um, uh, difficult. I mean, I, I I I think Jimmy and I go back to the time when you had three networks and maybe a UHF channel for your television, mm-hmm. and um, uh, so now you know. All these streaming services, you, you see a show, you go, oh, that sounds, you go like, and it's a streaming service you've never heard of before. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's, there's way too much out there uh, to keep up, uh, to keep up with. So, yeah, even things that are reputedly good, there's just not enough time in the day to see it all. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Especially, especially, especially when you, you know, have, oh, I don't know, a job um, to do. <laughs> But um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, there's, there, it's the, yeah, it's, 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 it's really, and I'm, I, I, yeah, I know it's, it's, it, it's, it's good for the people that make the stuff, but I wonder sometimes if it's, you know, maybe we do have too much to see and, and take in and, um, you know, that, you know, Maybe we all should unplug for like, I don't know, uh, uh, some people can't imagine unplugging for a a minute, but, you know, for a day or a week or something. I mean, there have been, you know, the the time when, you know, know, 
we could spend our time, you know, every every non-working minute, you know, catching up on something. Uh, for me, it's going to, you know, shows and the like. So it's, it's, um, I'm rambling. I guess I am. I guess I'm, I guess I'm getting old in my old age. But anyway, <laughs> uh, there is, there is, there's a lot, there's just a lot of stuff out there. And we do what we can to try to keep you, uh, our lovely readers and viewers abreast of, of, of what is going on. Speaking of which, Jimmy, besides the uh, 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 pop culture convention you mentioned, what else is coming up on your well, side? I'll thing? take you back to the 70s and the 90s. Okay. I have a, uh interview with John Ford Coley of the 70s soft rock super duo, England Dan and John Ford Coley. Where would you think England Dan and John Ford Coley were from? Well, I know that England Dan, I believe, was from Texas. They're both from Dallas, so not from England. From Those are, so we'll talk with with England Dan, who has great memories of uh, all that stuff in the 70s. And then uh, the Goo Goo Dolls coming to the Hard Rock, more known as a 90s band, although they're not a nostalgia act. They continue to have new albums. Uh, but uh, got yeah, those two just, interviews. They just had up. a new one come out recently. Is that right? Yeah, very recently. Yeah. Okay. Grace, what have you got? What have you got coming up for for for, for this weekend? Um, let's see. Um, I have a preview of an affair of the heart, which is coming to the fairgrounds at I believe the same time as the pop culture convention. True. So people can split up and go where they want to go for that. But I talked to several vendors. Um, most of them are brand new businesses, and it's going to be either their first or second time. Um, ever taking their their products to um, a convention like this. So it's pretty exciting for them. So that'll be on Saturday. And then I believe on Friday, I have another story about um, this event that's coming up this weekend, which is like a gun buyback event um, put on by some activist groups in Tulsa who are trying to sort of rid the community of unwanted guns. So if someone is like looking rid looking to get rid of a gun, they can come and turn it in. And then several blacksmiths are going to um, melt down those gun parts and actually make them into garden tools, which is really cool. So um, yeah, that's just a really cool thing that's happening. So I have a story on that for Friday. And that's, I think that's it for me. The modern day equivalent of beating one's swords into plowshares. Yes. Getting kind of getting biblical on us there. All right. Well, great. Well, um, we'll be having an interview with a violinist that will be performing with the Tulsa Symphony named uh, Robert Chen. He is the concert master for the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, which is one of the country's been one of the world's greatest orchestras. But he's going to be playing a, a, an unusual piece called the Butterfly Lovers Concerto, which is written by two uh music students in China in the late 50s. And it is a, a, um, a musical setting of an old um, Chinese folk tale that has sort of like um, um, Romeo and Juliet crossed with Yentl. Um, and, uh, but it's, it, and that'll be the, the centerpiece of this. It uses uh, Chinese musical language, but it's played on Western instruments. It's a very, it's a lovely piece. Um, parts of it get used a lot for, um, if you ever watch like figure skating during the Olympics, um, a lot of the Chinese performers will use bits and pieces of this uh, to, to accompany what they do. So um, if you are uh, hungry. What have we done, talked about? Oh my, yes, we talk about uh, we do an inter uh, do a review of the latest location of Chicken and the Wolf um, on Eleventh Street, across from TU. Um, if you are fans of spicy food, they will light you up. But not everything they have is 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 terribly spicy. They they they, they cover all all taste range, and it's quite good. And we'll also uh, head down south for a um, new to Tulsa barbecue place called Daddy B's Barbecue. So look for that in upcoming issues of the Tulsa World, available at fine news sellers everywhere and online at tulsaworld.com. Well, I think that will do for uh, this week. We'll come back down to earth uh, probably for next week and, and see what comes up, 
see what comes of it then. So on behalf of my colleagues, the lovely and talented Jimmy Trammell and the lovelier and talented Grace Wood, we wish you a pleasant good day. Behave. Bye.